Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see basis of UG27 formula ASME section 8 division 1. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. There is uh, three different types of stresses. You know? We are talking about stresses generated due to pressure. So internal pressure. Because UG27 is about designing of a cylindrical shell for internal pressure. That is the statement. Okay. So internal pressure raises three types of different stresses in a pressure vessel. Okay. Circumferential stress, which is by the direction you can see here, it is in circumferential direction. Okay. Longitudinal stress is in the length direction, okay, in the axis along the axis of the cylinder. Radial stresses are normal to the inside wall. Okay, these are the radial stresses. So these are the three major stresses, principal stresses, which are created because of internal pressure. Okay, yes, these are the primary stresses. Great. So now, if uh, three different stresses are created, we'll like to see which one is governing the thickness, right? Whichever stress is more, that will govern the thickness, isn't it? So we already know the bookish formula. Before we go to uh, ASME formula, let us try to understand the basic and go to the ASME uh, bookish formula, which you have academic formula, which you have already learned in college. So circumferential stress is given by PD by 2T. Okay, we all know that formula. Longitudinal stress, half of that. It is PD by 4T. Radial stress, which is acting along the radius, normal to the wall, that is P, exactly equal to the pressure. Okay, so now by seeing these three formulas, you'll come to know that circumferential stresses are governing the stress value. So thickness will be governed by circumferential stresses, right? And Ranjit, you are right. Radial stresses are negligible because only P, you know, if you compare it with D by 2T, now you also remember at this point that whatever formula we are referring that is for thin shell that is why it is called membrane stresses okay please remember that thin because membrane is a representative of thin thing compared to that so thin and thick or relative terms okay so we'll see what is the ratio of thickness to radius which we call is a thin or thick okay because Otherwise, it will be relative term. What is thin for me may not be thin for you. Okay. So, this is the equation which is true for thin shell. Okay, that is the reason it's called thin shell theory. Okay, so PD by 2T, PD by 4T, and P are the three different stresses. Okay, now just try to figure out like what we are trying to do here. We are not trying to find the stresses. Stress here is what? Anybody can tell me what is the like if I want to use PD by 2T, circumferential stress is equal to PD by 2T. What I'm trying to find out, whether I'm trying to find out stress, because if I am trying to find out stress, thickness is also unknown. So if there are two unknowns, I won't be able to use that formula. So here the stress. The stress part, the circumferential stress, is what? What is the circumferential stress here? Do we have a value for that? Yes, C. Kumar, absolutely right. Amol, Anuj, Ansari, absolutely right. Allowable stress. So the circumferential stress here is the allowable stress. It includes all the factor of safety which we want to have. And this is the stress which is known to us. So if I just write the formula in terms of TC, 
like circumferential thickness for circumferential stress i can write it as pr divided by or pd divided by 2s yes, or pr divided by s yes, right both are same thing got d by 2 i can write as pr divided by s right now see till now there is no uh, mention of joint efficiency right we know that see this is the academic formula so it considers a very hypothetical case that you know, shell is having without any joint that is not possible in actual case unless it is a forging but still at the end you'll have to weld even if it is a, a forging a forged shell okay so in normal scenario we use plate to make the pressure vessel that is the normal thing so if you are welding welding the long seam or sir seam there will be involvement of weld right if the weld is involved okay then we don't know what is the efficiency of weld right we don't know what is uh, uh, how we'll use that whether that weld is strong or not strong how to see that right it is not taking part so if if i have not welded it properly if only half of the thickness i have welded i cannot say that this will be the required thickness right because at that location at the weld location stresses will be much higher and it will fail right because the thickness is only half of that we have welded we need complete uniform tc thickness tc which we have calculated that is the minimum design thickness i need to have that even at weld and it the strength of that weld should be as good as base material it should not have any defect because again if there are defects the stresses will be high and it will fail so that consideration is not there when we use pd by 2t so what we need we need joint efficiency okay so if i add just if i add joint efficiency if i divide that s value if i multiply with e i'll get the factor of weld efficiency also into the account okay now does it look uh, very close to what we see the formula still it may, may not be exactly but if you remember pr divided by se minus 0.6p we'll come to that we'll compare we'll see how that definition why this that is modified but now you see it's started looking very similar you know to what we have seen okay so this is the academic formula with joint efficiency added okay so if your thickness is less than r by 10 if my thickness is less than radius divided by 10 or 0.1 r then it is called thin shell okay when the thickness is more than 0.1 r or greater than r by 10 it is called thick shell so this formula which we have used the academic formula it gives the stresses very close to what in reality you will get if you do some experiment the stresses will match very closely with the formula okay r is the inside radius muzamil okay t is the shell thickness and r is the inside radius okay so t is less than 0.1 r then it is thin shell t is greater than 0.1 r it is thick shell so the academic formula gives the stresses very accurately predict the stresses very accurately for thin shell you know, if we have thin shell and we try to actually calculate the stresses by doing some experiment and find the stresses by using this formula you will be getting very close values but when the same thing is done for thick shells it cannot predict the stresses accurately then what we do is there any formula for thick shell anybody remembers that any formula which you might have used any time for thick shell or you might have referred any time yes seeth is absolutely right that is lamay's equation okay 
So Lamez equation predicts the stresses for thick shell. Okay, when your T is greater than 0.1 hour, we can use this formula. Okay, I think you are able to understand what are the different terms. P is pressure, S is the stress, R I inside radius, R O outside radius. By using this equation, I can find the stresses for thick shell. Okay. But now ASME was, you know, ASME has to adopt one equation, okay, which can predict stresses to a quite good range, okay, not only for thick or not only for thick. So it has to get some equation which is good for thin also, good for thick also. Okay. Before going to that uh, ASME formula, you know, if we see this graph, okay, try to see this graph. This is a very important graph. Uh, what equations I'm using? Equation one, which is PT by PD by 2T and the E efficiency we have taken. So that is the equation first. You can see that in red color. Okay. That is the equation for PD by 2T or PR divided by T. Okay. So what it is indicating that how the this ratio S by P varies with R plus T, which is nothing but outside radius divided by inside radius. Okay, that will give you the exact thickness, you know, the ratio of the thickness. OD divided by, not OD, outside radius divided by inside radius. Okay. Now, if we draw this equation 2, which is Lamé's equation, okay, this yellow line indicates the Lamé's equation. Okay, and you see the difference in stresses getting generated because of these two different equations. So if you see if the ratio R plus T divided by R, if it is less than 1.25, okay, 1.25 is this line. If it is less than that, it is very closely matching. But beyond that, you know, it is not giving us the accurate result, okay. The problem is that it is the ratio is S by P is lesser than equation two. So it will, it will not give conservative stress. It will give less stress. That is not conservative. So we can not adopt equation one as it is. If you want to find the stresses for the thick shell also, right? Now what to do? Okay. So ACME also, when ACME committee was trying to find out this equation, they did the experimental, experimental plus theoretical calculation. So when they draw these two graphs, you know, they started modifying the thin shell theory equation. Okay, the PR divided by T, they started tweaking that equation and try to see whether, you know, we are getting some graph which is good for this, for the ratio, which is very low and also good for higher ratios. So it is matching for lower ratio, it's matching with thin shell theory and for higher, it is matching for, with thick shell theory. So if you are able to generate such equation, that will be really good because that one equation can predict stresses for thin and thick. Okay. So that is the reason that 0.6p term was added. Okay. This formula is not directly derived, but this 0.6p term was added based on the experiment to just match that equation so that for lower values, when thickness becomes really comparative with radius, you know, that time also the stressor should be correctly predicted. So that small modification was done to the equation PR divided by SE. Just see this minus 0.6p term was subtracted at the bottom okay so that is the only difference in thin shell theory and the code formula okay we'll talk about the different terms okay what is p what is r before that now you see the graph you know again this graph if you can see this green color the green color equation is the asm equation See the beauty, you know, for 
lower ratios, it's meeting with thin shell theory. For higher ratios, it's very close to equation two. Okay. So it's predicting the stresses very accurately, even for thick shell, but still there is limitation. Okay. It cannot predict for even all the T by R ratios. There is limitation, which we will see when we'll refer the code. So you might have not identified, but code when before giving that formula, it has one statement. Okay. We else will see that. Okay, so now you got it how this uh, equation was derived by doing experiment and find out finding out the actual stresses which might be there in the pressure vessels and to predict those stresses accurately by using a simple formula. Okay.